Hello, my name is Petra Hunger. I'm an SAP TM Freelance Consultant. And today I want to summarize the package builder enhancement um, back by podcast by Markus Sun and Joanne Philippe. I, I have uh, listened to the podcast. It's very inf interesting information, but it's difficult to understand without screenshots. So I'm just going to sum up everything. The rights will remain with the SAP, of course. Um, but I just want to make it a bit easier to understand the subject. I hope you like it. So let's uh, go right into the subject. So here you again, I just to insist SAP SE or SAP affiliate company. All rights are of course reserved with SAP. There's, uh, that's uh, clear and obvious, but I just have to say it again uh, because I want to re be respectful with the rights. At the button, you will see the link to the podcast, uh, which was is very still very interesting to look at. Markus Sun and Joanne Philippe are discussing the different enhancement options uh, of the package builder in SAP TM. Um, in this overview, you you see all the different um, methods in the package builder enhancement, and the slides are, are going to go through each of them and explain exactly what you can do there. Okay, so uh, as an introduction, so I will try to give back the word as good as possible that Markus uh, has used to explain the tool. So it's an independent tool, the package builder. It can be called from different places. So on the right side, you can see there is early package building, which you can do in the freight unit. Then there is package generation that you can do in the freight order. And there's package generation using the consolidation button and the cockpit. All three areas will actually call a central tool called the package builder. And uh, then there is a reminder, don't modify anything that can help, uh, hurt you really bad in the really upgrade important. and stick to the standard uh, yeah. enhancement spots, which we will go through yeah. in detail yeah. now. Also um, also and also if you need also something, also then also you should contact also Markus Sahn. Also <laughs> he will yeah. provide something yeah. new yeah. instead yeah. of uh, you to modify it, something. Yeah. So I think he's open for you to uh, communicate your scenario to yeah. him yeah. And, and get his advice uh, for how you can actually do that. There are still, there are two methods which are very important, the pre-processing and the post-processing method. One is adjust items input, which will contain all the input that you give to the package builder, and another one is um, adjust items output, which gives the packaged items back, and you uh, and non-packaged as well. But we will go into details of these two different methods in the next slides. Okay, so then you have a package uh, called slash SCMP uh, slash pb underscore engine. In this message, in this package, you will find the package interfaces, the class library, the message classes, and the enhancement. And um, there is there are main methods to influence the input and the output of the package builder. So one method is obsolete, obsolete. So it's out of date. It's called adjust I underscore items. Um, in the it was used before that uh, gave the possibility to cluster the items, but it was refactored and now it's outdated. So now it's better to use, or it's re recommended to use, the method adjust underscore items underscore input and the method adjust items underscore output. So um, it's called after the consolidation was done, the input. So, And then the, the adjust items output is called um, uh, after the package builder has run and you can remove items because you do, do not want to package them. You can also adjust the settings and this is the spot to collect the data you require. You can collect keys such as customer material and get all the data y that you will use later. Okay, so then we have a look at the main interface class uh, it's called slash scmb slash if underscore x underscore package builder. In this interface class, you will see different methods, and these are the different methods that you saw already on the first screen uh, that, that we will look into. And here on this slide, you can see an overview. Then you have, you can, in order to use, uh, actually to make an enhancement, you can create an implementation. Um, you can use SE19 to do that. 
then uh, you will actually use new body, then you enter the enhancement spot, slash SCRB, ES underscore package builder, and then uh, you press create. After pressing create, you give the enhancement implementation name and description, and you can leave component enhancement implementation empty. Then you will, you can actually, um, yeah, you have to provide a package, uh, ZTM in this case, for example, and then you have to provide a body implementation name and, and implementation class and a body definition as shown below. After that you activate and then uh, you come to the next screen. And for example here I am uh, showing the input data for the adjust items input method. So as already mentioned, this is for you to influence the input data. And um, so in the CT item current, you have only material. What is And then Felipe is actually asking why are the only materials passed and nothing more, what's the reason? Um, the reason is that package building settings have not, not yet happened at that place. So we couldn't send package material. So at that place, we only send material data. Uh, and we are only looking at the materials that go into package building. And this is the spot for the customer to influence the items that will be packaged later. So why is there no call to the enhancement uh, spot? This is handled by the member class MOBP Enhance to decouple the customer enhancement. So SAP can run unit tests for the core functionality and do automatic testing for some enhancement that SAP is aware of. Okay, so then we come to the method adjust items output. So we see here as well the input parameters. So we have IT, uh, IT item input, IT, uh, CT item change, and CT item new. So that's the last method that is called during the functional processing. It hands over the items that have been supplied to the package builder, and it hands over the result items. IT item input has all items that were input into the package builder, so very similar to the one we saw before. And then CT item change hands over each item that was processed. And that is regardless if it was packed, packed or not. And then we have CT item new. And that one has only the newly created package item and also split items resulting from the processing. If a product does not fit onto one package, um, you have that information, you find the split quantity that is not on a, in the item change. And Previously, SAP has returned only the package items, was the explanation from Marcos, but it was then cumbersome to find out which items were packaged and which ones were not packaged, but which ones were left over. So they decided to change that and uh, make the items which were packed and unpacked available uh, to the enhancement. Um, okay, so it's in CT item changed. So now uh, Marcus is also saying, be careful, you may change data, but it can happen that the application cannot process your result. Okay, so basically you get the packed items and also the unpacked items if they couldn't be packed, and then you can change the data here, uh, but you have to be careful because the, the, it may not be able to process your, result, your data. Then we come to the method adjust package material. Um, so basically the package builder evaluates the target package types, it picks up the package material, it gets the master data instance and the attributes from here. So here you have the option to adjust the attributes that the package builder handles internally for a packaging material. It is important when you use a complex, completely unknown package material, when the reading and access logic is not in the existing logic. It allows deviating from the existing master data definition related to package materials. For example, you find length, width, and height of a package material and the capacity. Here is the spot to change it if you need. If you make the pallet too small, the processing will be of course affected. The fields contained in this table are the only relevant data that the package builder will use later. Some fields may not be relevant because mixed package building is not active. This depends on the scenario. The customer could use this to influence the stacking factor of a packaging material. So if you can't fix the stacking factor, but it depends on other criteria, you could influence it here. 
So the question from Philippe is then how would we know the materials that are used? Then uh, the answer is use the other method, adjust items, not this one. Yeah? If you, uh, then that other method uh, has the materials uh, that you will input. Then customer stored data in shared memory. So Markus is telling that some customers have stored the data in shared memories, but he thinks it's not required because uh, it can all be done in this class. So there is no requirement to temporarily store the data somewhere. So then we have the adjust settings method. It's one of the first methods to be called. It allows influencing the settings from the trade unit building rule or from the planning profile. So in debugging, you can see what the settings are within one structure where you have the option to change the settings. There are sometimes options that cannot be configured. You might be able to adjust it here because the functionality is there in a, in a later release, but the customizing is not yet there. So if SAP wants to help customers struggle with missing functionalities and often they often advise using this enhancement to, to activate the options that will be available in a later release, but are not there in configuration. After that, these settings are used for the processing. It's the last option for the customer to influence this. And, and as Felipe is asking, it's called in the get p package builder profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next method, check items changed. So now this can be used if you want to in exclude one of the products from the processing in certain situations. You can set a parameter for this product. If it is set, it is skipped in the processing. So if you, uh, that means that product, it will not be packed uh, afterwards and you are just saying, okay, uh, keep, leave this uh, on the side. Then you have the method check layer compatible. This provides the option to say that the product is not compatible, as a product A is not compatible with product B. You can see it here in the picture. And uh, today we have the product relationship in standard. So in customizing, you can actually say which products don't fit together. But um, at, uh, when this functionality was not there, it would have made sense to use this method. Today it can be customized in standard that two products are not compatible with each other. Okay, so then we have two methods, combine layers to packages and consolidate layers. So um, there are two options. Option one is using the height of the layers and option two is using the product sequence. So the customer can use this method to change the combination logic of the layers and what is allowed to be combined. For example, unassigned leftover product can be processed. At this spot, the customer can say, I would rather combine product A and B compared to A and C if they are left over. And this is con called into the in consolidate into mixed layers. And then you have a method, it's called determine item sequence. If you, s if you want to steer the package building into the direction of the product pick sequence, so you want to say, okay, this one before the other, you receive the items that should be packaged and you can dynamically call into the warehouse to determine the sequence of the items. The, S the optimizer has its own logic. It's only covered by the layer processing and the volume-based processing. So you can influence the sequence, which product is to be packaged first uh, and which last, uh, and in which sequence. Um, if you have many remaining quantities, the sequence of the packing might be completely different as the one by the layers. Okay, next method, determine the package type. Okay, there can be different package types. Like for example, you can see on this picture, you have a carton and you have um, a cooled box. For example, it's the example that Markus Sun is using and you want to influence the package type independently of the package, the product package assignment. So then uh, you can use this uh, method. Is there an existing package type? You can override the type package type or define it here itself. It is called per item, deeper packaging product. It can be useful in deeper packaging, as Markus uh, Zahn is saying. Um, you can put product into cartons and cartons into pallets. If carton depends on the product group, um, for example, all ice, ice cream products, they all have to go into a cool box. Yeah? Um, you can do that, but you can of course okay. also use a reference material in the product package assignment. Okay. 
So then you, the next method you can use is the determined split factor method. So there you, um, you can change the split factor after the target package type has been determined. The package builder combines all of those settings with the master data settings, such as limits, maximum height, maxi maximum height in the package type, into the relevant logic that will apply. The customer can manipulate the maximum height depending on its own logic. Many attributes can be changed here by the customer and will be used as such by the package builder and not to be changed by standard after that. So this defines the behavior. So be careful with Markus Zahn. It can affect the output message. It's very powerful. Use package builder test report to test things first. So then we have uh, another method, it's set package complete. So set package complete is very important for grouping. So it might make sense to not distribute the same material to many pallets. The package builder will always try to consolidate the same material together. The customer can change the logic after each grouping to use the custom logic and tell the package builder this pallet is okay like this, don't change it. Or items that are not marked as finally, then the result will be skipped and the package builder will try to combine them again. It's called after the standard set as complete, so it will override. Um, example, if the pallet is almost empty, mix it together with other customers, but only in this specific case. In the new release, we have a finalization threshold, or SAP has a finalization threshold setting to make intermediate packaging final. So then I just finished the presentation. I tried to make it as short as possible so that you save time. Um, so the test of the package build as possible with the test report, you can call SC38 slash, uh, and then or transaction slash SCMV slash test underscore PB, and then you get that screen where you can put the product in, the quantity, and the package builder profile, and then based on this you run it and you can see the package result, and on the right side you can see lots of messages that informs you what the package builder has done. That's the end of my presentation. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much. Take care.